So this is part two of our DNA viruses. Welcome back. Now we are going to be focusing on hepadenovirus. So again, when we're talking about hepadenovirus, the first thing we want to find out is, is it covered by the head? Sure it is. So that would be our first thing. So this is going to be enveloped. Okay. We saw how Harpy's virus was linear. Pox virus was brick or diamond shaped. What's the shape of hepadna? Oh, semicircular? Does that sound good? It sounds good to me. So the shape is now going to be semicircular. Okay, so that's part two. Number three is they are going to replicate inside the nucleus and the enzyme that they are going to be using is called reverse transcriptase. Okay, reverse transcriptase. So see how the arrows are going backwards? They're going to be using reverse transcriptase. With the help of using the enzyme DNA dependent DNA polymerase. Okay. DNA dependent DNA polymerase. Now one thing is important to remember is that Hepadna has a virus called hepatitis B, which needs, which needs, which actually hepatitis D, so Hep D needs Hep B to cause infection. Okay, so I just wanted to throw it out there. Number point number five is that these hepatoviruses have vaccines that are being made from it. Vaccines are available. And um, it can cause cirrhosis of the liver. Okay, that's it. That's all about Hepadna virus. Moving on to the next virus is going to be our Papova virus. Now, instantly, the first thing we're going to say is is Papova virus enveloped or not enveloped? Papova virus is not enveloped because it doesn't it's not covered by the hat. Okay. That's the first thing we're going to see. Second thing is that is it going to be circular? Sure it is. It's going to be circular in shape. You can see how one ear was circular. Okay. And um, so if they're not enveloped, they are naked. Okay, so what are some of the Papuva virus that we know of? There is the JC virus. There is the BK virus. Those are important Papuva virus that we know. There is also the uh, HPV, HPV virus, okay, that is also important. Some other things that we need to know is which of the HPV virus causes what. Now HPV 1 and 4 is going to cause plantar warts or warts in the legs. HPV 6 and 11 is going to cause anal or genital warts. Okay. Another name for them is condyloma acuminata. Okay. Just throwing it out, throwing it out there. 
Now, the one that causes uh, cervical cancer is going to be 16, 18, those uh, variations of the HPV virus. Now, I want to take this opportunity to talk about two proteins called E6 and E7. We're going to go back to the diagram soon, but I just want to quickly talk about this. E6 and E7, they inactivate two cellular anti-oncogenes. Okay? So they inactivate tumor suppressor gene. What do they inactivate? They inactivate P53 okay, and P111. Okay, they inactivate these two uh, tumor suppressor genes. And these two are also inactivated by retinoblastoma. So kind of correlation between infection with HPV infection and retinoblastoma is that they both inactivate P53 and P110. So just wanted to throw it out there. The next one we're going to be talking about is our parvovirus. Just want to erase a little bit here so that you don't get confused with all the junk. The next thing we're going to be talking about is parvovirus. Now whenever we're talking about parvovirus, the first thing we're going to look at is is this going to be enveloped or non-enveloped? Does it fall under the hat? Not really. So this is going to be naked. Okay, That's the first thing we see. Now see how linear the shape of parvovirus is. Okay? They're so linear. So they are going to be linear in shape. Okay, now see how it's only one strand right here? It's not two strands. That's why this is the only one which is going to be single stranded. Remember that, okay? Purple virus is going to be single stranded. Now Parvovirus is famous for causing aplastic anemia. Okay, they're going to cause, you know, they love to go to the bone marrow and they're going to cause um, aplastic anemia. In newborns, they can cause hydrops fatalis. Okay. In fact, they fall under the torch group, okay, torch group of uh, viruses, and they are also causes a disease called fifth disease, okay. Now fifth disease has a slapped cheek appearance in kids, so that's why you're going to see the slapped che cheeks in, uh, in kids causing fifth disease. The one thing that I forgot to mention is that the single-stranded, um, you know, these viruses, the parvovirus is single-stranded. Now, this is the tongue sticking out. The tongue is only one. Um, I remember uh, getting confused with this and thinking that, you know, if they're single-stranded, how am I going to differentiate between the other ones? So this is going to be single-stranded because it has one tongue sticking out. So I just wanted to mention that there. Now that is the end of um, parvovirus. Now the only one that is left is the adenovirus. Okay, so let's talk about the adenovirus. So the first thing we are going to write down is um, adenovirus is going to be uh, naked. And by now you are you know for sure why it's going to be naked because it's all the way in the neck. It's not covered by the hat. Um, since it affects the neck, um, we are going to have pharyngitis from the adenovirus. By the way, I should write adeno here. Okay, we're going to have pharyngitis, conjunctivitis, and also gastroenteritis. All these are going to be part of the um, 
adenovirus. Now, it is also the number one cause of pharyngitis. It's not only pharyngitis, it's the number one cause of pharyngitis. Now, this uh, adenovirus is a scarf going around the neck, okay? And there is only one scarf going in one shape. That's why they're also going to be linear in shape. They're going to be linear in shape. The conjunctivitis can be written also as pink eye. Adenovirus is famous for causing pink eye. We can also have UTI from adenovirus. Okay. Now that's pretty much it. You know, we don't have to go into too much details about adenovirus. Um, these are, the, you know, the basic basic points which needs to be remembered. Now, I what I did skip before are the different variables or different uh, herpes viruses. So I'm just going to talk about the herpes virus in general. The number one is going to be um, HSV1, which is going to be the oral, the one that causes oral lesions. These are the one which is latent in trigeminal ganglion. That's herpes 1, followed by HSV2. These are the one that causes genital lesions. These are latent in sacral ganglion. Okay, sacral ganglion. Then we have VZV or varicella. This, this is the one that causes chicken pox. Okay. These are also, these also can be dormant. Okay. They are going to be dormant in um, dorsal ganglia. Okay. So they can be dormant or latent in dorsal ganglia. And if, there's a lot of symmetry between the three, right? Because they come from the same family. Next is going to be, four is going to be EBV. These are the one that causes mononucleosis. Okay. This was uh, latent in B cells. Okay. Followed by CMV. These are latent in mononuclear cells. Okay. Um, CMV, okay, one thing that I want to talk about between CMV and EBV is that EBV is going to be heterophile positive, and this is going to be heterophile negative. Okay, these are the two specific differences between EBV and CMV. Okay, moving on to the next one. Number six of the herpes virus is going to be roseola. Okay, this is the one that causes sixth disease followed by Kiposi's sarcoma. This is transmitted by sexual contact. Now those are all the herpes virus. To end it all, I just want to say that there is a quick mnemonic to remember all the DNA virus and mnemonic is happy. H is herpes, hepadna, A for adeno, P for pox, 